how do you become the top match for 30,000 women on OkCupid? Okay <laughs> uh. This is my secret life. This is my secret life. This is my secret life. I love this one. It's about a math whiz who hacked his way to true love. I applied to graduate schools in applied math and was fortunate to get a full ride at UCLA. In my sixth year, my funding ran out. I had to live on $400 a month instead of $1,200 a month. So I decided I would move into my thesis cubicle. I would spread out a little foam pad on top of my desk to sleep. I just spent all my time working on my thesis, which involved using a supercomputer that I would remotely connect to. I would kill time on OkCupid. OkCupid is a free dating website. Between any two users, it generates a match percentage on the basis of your answers to all these multiple choice questions. I'd answered a couple hundred questions, and I got zero messages per week. And so that's what I started. I started using all my supercomputing time analyzing OkCupid match question data. <laughs> The first thing I did was gather a lot of data from OkCupid and mine all that data for patterns. I learned that when women in Southern California go online and answer questions, their answers clump up into one of seven different bumps. So I ended up finding like a group that looked like the kind of person that I would like to date. I wrote a bunch more combinatorial optimization code to go and figure out which questions were most important to this group of people and figuring out which of those questions I felt comfortable answering truthfully all of a sudden, I became the top match for over 30,000 women. The median number of unsolicited messages for a, a straight or bisexual male in OkCupid is zero. But I was getting 10 or so unsolicited messages every day. I was like trending globally on OkCupid. I decided, okay, I'm gonna go on an average of one date per day until I meet someone worth stopping for. The first date I, I went on, I like leave my cubicle and shower uh, at the gym and I meet this person. And one of the first things she says to me is, I've never seen a 100% match before. Do you think that we're soulmates? It was pretty clear that we weren't soulmates, but people have real expectations when they see that someone's 100% match. I had really underestimated how much of a factor that was going to play in the minds of the people that I met. A good chunk of the first 30 dates I went on were people that would never have looked at me twice in a normal situation. So what did you do to minimize the chances that someone might get hurt? I started going on really efficient, depersonalized dates. I would schedule four dates, one after the other. Obviously, this is a weird way to go about dating, and I began to question, like, what, what is it I'm doing? Do I really want to meet someone? But I kind of stuck with it until I got to date number 88. I just got a really good vibe from her immediately, and she told me, hey, you know, I changed my profile for you because it says that you never write anyone back. It spilled my guts. I was like, oh, well, I, I changed my profile too. In fact, I wrote a whole bunch of natural language processing software to optimize it, and then I hacked all the match scores, and I've been going on a day for day, and I'm not sure what I'm looking for anymore, but I think you might be cool. You know, is that like weird? She thought about it and said, it's not weird. That's actually kind of what it's like to be a woman dating on OkCupid. You have a bunch of people writing you. You're not sure what exactly they see in you, but you, you kind of have a sense that it's not what you value in yourself and how do you manage that. You know, it was a great date. I didn't know that years later she was going to be the person I was engaged to.